Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today we're going to be talking about the important maintenance that you should be looking at on your e-bike. I think this video is going to be helpful for everyone from new e-bike riders to people that have been riding e-bikes for a while but that just haven't been sure of what they should be looking for and what they should be working on to keep their e-bike in tip-top shape. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving out a free e-bike, specifically this one, the Ride One Up Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. It's an awesome e-bike and you could be the one to win it, so make sure you stick around to the end of this video so you see how it could be you. In my opinion, brakes are the most important part of an e-bike, so we're gonna start there and look at how to keep your brakes tuned and in good shape. Now, if you guys have watched my videos or reviews on e-bikes before, you'll probably know that I really like hydraulic disc brakes, and one of the main reasons is just that they're basically zero maintenance. Until you wear those pads out, there's really nothing you need to do to keep them tuned and braking properly, and for a lot of people who are recreational riders, you might go a year or more before you wear your pads out. But on more budget level bikes that actually have a mechanical cable that runs down from the levers to the brake cap, Calipers, you do need to do some routine maintenance to make sure that your brakes are working properly. You might notice that over time as you pull your brake levers, they start to get closer and closer to the handlebars until they're actually touching the bars. And that's a big problem because if your levers touch the bars, you're running out of braking power. I see this happen all the time that people don't know how to do that adjustment and then they run out of braking power and they can't stop as quickly. So this is how you take care of that and keep your brakes working well. Now it starts with minor adjustments you can make up at the brake lever here. As you start pulling your brakes and over time that cable stretches, you wear your pads a little bit, this lever will get closer and closer to touching the bar here. To get yourself a little more space here, what you'll do is you'll slowly open up this barrel adjustment here, give it a couple turns, and then you'll slide this stop back and that locks it in place. Now when you go to pull your lever, you're going to have more space here. And basically that just pulls a little more cable for you and gives you a little more time before you have to make a macro adjustment. You can go several turns on here, but this is just sort of a stopgap measure. This isn't a macro adjustment. That's what you'll make down by your brake calipers. But this can buy you some time over a few months until you need to make a bigger adjustment. When it's time though that your barrel is all the way out here and you don't have any room left to make adjustments, you're going to want to bring this back in and then I'll show you how to make that macro adjustment down at the caliper. You have either a micro adjuster here, which does basically the same thing that we talked about up at the lever, or you can make a macro adjustment here. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna take a five millimeter Allen and just open up this bolt here. I like to keep my fingers on the back side here just to make sure that the cable doesn't slip through because it is under spring tension. And now that it's loose, I'm just gonna slide the cable through a little bit more, usually just two, three, four millimeters. It doesn't take much and then re-tighten that bolt right there, holding the cable. Now what that does is it's pulled more cable through, makes up for that cable stretch you've had over several months of braking, and resets your uh, brake calipers so that they're closer to the rotor. Now that you've got that set, you wanna make sure it's not too tight. You don't wanna be rubbing your brake pads on the rotor each time, because that's gonna wear them even quicker. So what you do here is you'll just pick up the wheel and spin it. You can see my brakes were already set correctly, so now I've got too much tension on that cable. And so what I'm going to need to do is just loosen that back off a little bit. So now I'm basically putting it back to where it was before I did this demonstration. And that should buy me the right amount of tension. Now you can see that my wheel spins freely and I'm good to go. Another common maintenance concern on an e-bike is tuning your derailleur. Over time, it can walk a little bit. Again, that cable can stretch. And you might need to do a bit of small adjustments here or there to make sure that you're not getting any clicking or grinding noises or that case where you're pedaling and all of a sudden you hear the chain jumping back and forth. It's pretty easy to do once you understand what the different adjustments on the derailleur control. Let's take a look. Now, when you operate your gears, you wanna make sure that the chain is staying in whatever gear you have it set for. And each time you change a gear, you want it to smoothly shift to the next gear ring. If you hear weird clicking or grinding noises, then something's not right and you're gonna to wanna to make an adjustment. Now to do these adjustments, I like to start with the chain on the lowest gear here. That's actually the biggest gear in back. Just like in the brakes, there's a barrel adjustment here and this can be used to make fine tune adjustments. So if you find that your cable has stretched over time and when you go to shift a gear, it's not quite clicking into the next gear. It feels like it wants to jump, but it's not. You can wind this sucker out, uh, maybe a turn or two, and that'll start to give you a little more cable tension there, and that might improve your problem, which is usually just from cable stretch. 
However, another problem that you might have is that your stops are not correctly adjusted. Basically, that gives you your limit from top to bottom. So we've got two limiting screws here. This is the low gear limit and this is the high gear limit. What that does is it prevents you from pulling too much cable or letting too much tension out. And the way to adjust those is starting at the top here in lowest gear, we're gonna adjust our low limit. That stop right there is where our screw is hitting the stop on the derailleur. So now you can see as I turn that screw, it's actually adjusting the position of the derailleur. If you find that your chain is hopping over the last gearing here and it goes up against the motor, you wanna tighten that screw until it prevents it from jumping that far. So now let's shift down into the highest gear, which is that smallest ring there. When you shift down, if you notice that your chain tends to jump in here between the frame and the gear, that means that your high gear stop is not correctly adjusted. So you wanna come in here and adjust that bolt. Same thing here, you can actually see the derailleur move as I turn this. You see the way the derailleur is moving there? That's adjusting the limit. So now I wanna back it out to where I had it so that it's perfectly in line with that last gear ring. Now if I do a little test here, you can see I've got it back in line and my chain is not jumping at all. If I go back up and then I shift down, my chain is not jumping off the small ring anymore. Next up, let's talk about battery maintenance. Now, there's not a lot to do in terms of battery maintenance. Really, you just wanna keep it dry and clean. If you're riding out in the rain, make sure that you take your battery off afterwards, dry it out. If the contacts are dirty, make sure you clean those off. Those are the main points. But there are some things you wanna consider regarding your battery to keep it in good condition. On a bike like the Walkie X3 here, the battery is hidden inside the frame. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind, and you might forget about some of this stuff. So let's go over some key points here. One of the things you wanna make sure you do is you don't leave the battery on the bike in extreme conditions. So if it's bitterly cold out or it is bitterly hot and sunny out, you wanna make sure that you take that battery indoors. In terms of extreme cold, we're talking about below like minus 5C or so. In terms of extreme hot, we're talking about above probably mm, 35, 40C, that kind of thing. You just don't wanna leave the battery out in those conditions so it's just super freezing or super baking. Some bikes like this, it's a little more of a chore to get that battery out. So you wanna make sure you actually do it. You know, in this case, you gotta fold the bike and pull it out. So you don't wanna just forget about it. Like I said, out of sight, out of mind sometimes. The next thing though is charging. You wanna make sure you don't charge this battery below about zero C or above about 30 C. The battery likes to be in a nice comfortable temperature range and you can actually do damage by charging it when it's too hot or too cold. You also don't want to store it at a full charge. If you're gonna be leaving your bike for more than a couple of days, you wanna drain the battery a bit. If you can leave your battery at about 50% charge, maybe you're going on vacation or you're not riding for the winter, that's the best bet. But if you can't drain your battery to 50%, maybe you charged it up all the way and then you're going on vacation, you're not gonna have a chance to ride it. Even just draining like 5% out of the battery, just do like a quick loop around the block will help get it below 100% because you just don't want to leave the battery at 100%. It's just not good for the chemistry and it will make the battery age quicker, staying at full charge for long periods of time. Next up, let's talk air pressure. Now, especially if you have fat tires like these, it's even more important to watch your air pressure. With narrower tires, it's pretty obvious to see when you start losing pressure, you see that sag more, you might even feel the rim hit, which you want to avoid. But with these fat tires, they're a little more forgiving and you might not notice that your air pressure is dropping over time if you're not keeping up with it. Fortunately, it's super easy. All you need is one of these air pressure testers. These are like, I don't know, three bucks. You can maybe get them for a dollar at like AutoZone near the checkout. Take your valve stem off, you pop this sucker on there and it'll tell you what pressure you're at. Right now, I am at about 24, which is pretty much perfect. I try to keep my fat tires at between 20 to 25 when I'm riding on the street like this. Though if I'm going off-road, I'll drop down to about 10 to 15 PSI so that I have a little more traction off-road. The problem when you get your tires too low, especially if you're on-road, is that you significantly impair your handling. Especially this front tire, if this one is too low and you go and make a turn, you could end up with your tire over here, your body over there, your wheel over there. It's, it's just not good. So you want to make sure you're keeping up with your air pressure, especially on that front tire that you don't get it too low. It can be quite dangerous. Now I like to keep one of these battery powered pumps around. It's just easier than trying to keep up with a uh, manual hand pump. These are super convenient. You just screw this sucker on, you push the power button, and it starts pumping. 
You can set it for the exact pressure you want. It doesn't wear out your arms while using a manual pump, and it's just so much nicer. You can generally get like 10, 15 fat tires filled with one charge on these things. Another area to consider for maintenance are your spokes and your wheels. Now, most of the time, your spokes are probably going to be fine, but if you're a heavier rider, you do more miles, or you've got a more powerful hub motor, you could find some spokes starting to loosen up. If that happens and you don't pay attention, the more those spokes loosen, the more tension goes on other spokes, the more those loosen. Eventually it's a runaway condition where you start breaking spokes and you can't fix it. So you wanna check early on and often to make sure your spokes are good. The easiest way is to simply run your fingers along your spokes. Make sure they all feel like they're at the same tension. If they all feel like they're at the same tension, then you're probably good. If you hear a rattling spoke, you know that one's loosened up and you're gonna need a spoke wrench to tighten it up. If you don't have a spoke wrench, you can find them real cheap all over, but you might have one and not realize it. If you have one of these bike multi-tools that come with a lot of e-bikes, open up this wrench. Among the different sizes, you probably have one for spoke nipples. The nipple is the end of the spoke here. There are different sizes of nipples. Do with that what you may. So hopefully this is gonna be the right size for your bike. In this case, it actually is. This one says it's a 14 gauge. So let's try that out and make sure we fit. And we do, so perfect. Now you do need to be careful messing with your spokes. If you don't know what you're doing and you over tighten or over loosen them, you're gonna get your wheel out of true. All you wanna do if you find a loose spoke is tighten it up just enough so it's tight again and it's at a similar tension. You can even do the guitar method and kind of pluck the spokes and you'll hear a little bit of a ding like a guitar string. You wanna make sure you match that. You don't wanna over tighten these things because you're gonna walk your rim out of true. I did a whole video on truing wheels. I'll put a link to that up here. If you wanna get into that, it's a little bit more than beginner maintenance. Now, while I'm down here, let's talk about one other area of maintenance, and that is checking all of the bolts on your bike. I'm not saying you gotta do it every time you get on your bike, but believe it or not, things do loosen up, and it's even happened to me. Just a few weeks ago, I was riding a bike I ride often. It wasn't this one, but I started hearing a weird noise behind me. I turn around and look, and I see that the kickstand is hanging off of the bike. One of the two bolts that holds it on had fallen out and the kickstand was just dangling there, dragging on the street. So even someone like me, who you would think knows a thing or two about bikes, even I forget to check some of these things from time to time. So it's a good idea to just go around your bike, look at all the important bolts, make sure everything's on there. Things like brakes, things like uh, your headset bolts, things like your steering stem, all of this stuff is critical. If any of these things were to loosen up, it could be very dangerous. A kickstand falling off, not as important as long as it doesn't go into the spokes, but certainly any critical bolts you want to inspect fairly often, just make sure they're all torqued down nice and tight, nothing's loose and rattling. If you're really worried about it, you can make it easy on yourself by taking a paint pen and just putting a line across the bolt onto the bike or onto the brake caliper, whatever it lines up with. And that way you can just look at it and see if the line lines up, you know you're good and the bolt hasn't moved or there's the freak chance where it turned an entire 360 degrees, but that usually doesn't happen. Now, if you have a folding bike like this one, this is the Edo Air, you're gonna to wanna to check these bolts and the folding mechanisms as well, because it's critically important that those stay where they are, that they stay tight. Either of these folding mechanisms, either in the middle of the bike or at the handlebars here, if they were to come loose, that could be very dangerous. So you wanna make sure you're checking these when you're going around and checking your important bolts to ensure that everything is safe and ready to ride each time you hop on the bike. Now the one last common maintenance step that I would probably include would be cleaning your chain. However, you don't do it as frequently as these other things. And I've got a whole video I'm going to be doing soon on cleaning every part of your bike. And this is a belt drive bike, so I wouldn't be able to do it here anyways. But I'm gonna have a whole video on that soon. So this covers all of the major maintenance that I think you'll need on a more daily to weekly basis. All right, now, like I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be giving away this e-bike, the Ride One Up Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. Here's how this is gonna work. I'm starting a new program. It's gonna run at the end of every one of my future videos. It's called E-Bikes for Good, and the goal is to give away a free e-bike each video to someone who can make a big difference in their life. Now, in my years in the e-bike industry, I have seen firsthand how much of a difference an e-bike can make in someone's life 
especially someone who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford an e-bike. Even one like this one at about $1,200, it's, it's more affordable in the e-bike space, but it can still be tough for someone on a limited budget. And here's the thing, a bit of straight talk, guys. I've reached the point now, my channel has grown so large, I'm at 280 something thousand subscribers, which I love, I've worked hard for this, but it means that I'm in this weird position where practically every day, e-bike companies are reaching out to me and trying to send me free e-bikes. But I don't need a free e-bike, I have an e-bike. I have several e-bikes. But there are people watching this video right now that actually do need a free e-bike and that can't afford one. And those are the people that I wanna help with this program. Those are the people that I wanna get an e-bike into your hands that can hopefully make a much bigger impact on you than another e-bike would make on me. And so if I can use that access to show you guys some cool e-bikes at the end of each video and get those e-bikes out into the hands of someone who it will make an actual difference in their life, then I think that's the best way I could use that privilege. So how's this gonna work? Basically, I've set up an entry form over at ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. The site is down here. Make sure you head over there and fill out the entry form. If you are someone who an e-bike can make a huge impact in your life, maybe you need it as a way to get to work or it can open doors for you or just any reason how an e-bike can improve your life, but maybe it's just out of your reach right now, let me know and hopefully you will be the randomly selected entrant. In this case, the bike we're giving away this week is the Ride One Up Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. Huge thank you to Ride One Up for partnering with me on this giveaway. In the future, I'll do other e-bikes, but I'm glad to start with this one because this is actually my personal bike. I love the Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. I ride this sucker all the time. I use it for both on and off-road, which is one of the coolest things about it. It is super fast. It gets up to about 24 or 25 miles per hour, which is great because when I'm on the road, I can really keep up with traffic. When I'm off-road, I can have some serious fun. But even so, it's still a lightweight bike. It's easy to pick up and carry upstairs if you live in an apartment like I do. It's got that nice carbon belt drive from Gates, so you don't have to worry about a chain rusting or that kind of maintenance. It's got disc brakes, so you know I really love this e-bike, and I think this could be a really awesome e-bike for you if you're someone that an e-bike could really help you out. So make sure you head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. Let me know how an e-bike can help you, and you just may be the winner of this e-bike. I will announce it at the end of my next video, where I'll be back with another giveaway. My goal with this is just to help as many people as I can get an awesome transportation tool like this one that can really make a big impact on their life. Last but not least, before we go, it's time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. The randomly selected commenter is... Dark Cloud. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from my DIY Lithium Batteries book, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For those that don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.